Hey, I know it's not Saturday, but I needed to, it's a perfect time. We had that cold front hit us, got down to like 19 or 18 degrees last night. And so we're not grinding. We, I don't grind unless it's above 32. It's very hard on hydraulic systems, on any equipment. I'm, you know, that's just me, you know. I've had past bad experiences going down into like in the teens with hydraulic machines. But enough of that. What I want to tell you about is some of you guys with these metal shops or, you, or pole barns and stuff like that, what I've done, you know, you're looking over my head right now. We're revisiting it, visiting this because I did another video about this, okay? The ceiling is uh, shot with two inches of closed cell phone. Not open, but closed cell. Now, on the other video, I showed you how I did my shop on the walls. And I'm, I'm a busy all summer long. But uh, I have a mini split in here, but I leave it turned off because I'm cheap. Because I found another way that I'm going to show you here. Let me turn this around. And show you how the shop is insulated and how it's been working and what's left to do in, inside the shop. It's a mess because I've been working on the stump grinders and welding and grinding stuff so let me turn this around for a minute and we'll go from there all right that's the machine i've been working on a bunch of other videos outside right now is 19 degrees these are indoor thermometers this one here says it's 45 percent humidity and 43 degrees in here okay now there's my mini split right there, and it's a really good one. It's uh, 24,000 BTU, I think it is, All right, with a remote control. And some of you guys who watch the channel know this is my mechanic side of the shop, all right? And what I did with these walls is I used the metal siding that you can get for barns and stuff, and I laid it horizontally, all right? And then I separated it with a two by four and, and just rounded off the, the edges of the two by four and stained it. Because the reason why I did that is because of those things, workbenches and stuff. Then that has also made a nice divide from this color to this color, all right? Now, that buffer, let me tell you, it's right where you, my toolbox is hit, see? All the toolboxes that collide into it. I still got to stain this side. And let's go. I want to show you something else. Reason why the shop is at 43 on this side, that side's my paint booth. All right. And it's not completely sealed because I've got my exhaust fan. I got insulation, ceilings, walls, everything. But all, all I got is these vents that open up. So I'm going to build like a cabinet door and insulate it and close it so for a better deal. And then I can open it up whenever I'm painting. But inside here, smaller space. This is 16 feet wide by 30 feet long, okay? And the ceilings are, I think 12 foot ceilings. And I'm using those LEDs that I showed you about. I also have them for the wall. If I turn on the switch, no, that's not really switch. I gotta turn them on the wall here, sorry. They all light up real. Now put them down low to light up the sides of the cars. Anyway, so enough of that. But in this room alone, look at the temperature, 50 degrees. All right. So what's keeping this shop, which is 30 feet long, I mean wide, by 30 by 40, 40 across. What keeps it warm and at this temperature right now when it's 19 degrees is this Walmart radiator type deal. I have it set at 61 degrees. All right. And that's what's keeping this room at 50 degrees. Actually, it's, sorry, 50.7. So, and that's not a really good closed-in air source. So, it's this insulating a shop with foam is a yes. 43 in here, right? And this is the bigger area. And all I do is leave the door open. And that heat comes in here. It goes back and forth. But this place would be even warmer if, let me show you something. This is the wall I've not completed. All right? It's just my outside wall to the front of the shop. It's halfway up. 
And for some of you that are looking at this stuff, say, what is it? If you haven't seen my last video, I'll tell you what it is. This is closed cell. It's called ISO board. They sell it at Home Depot, Lowe's, and place, it'll be pink, made by Dow Chemicals. This is two-inch closed cell ISO board with a fiberglass on both sides. The reason why you're seeing white is, originally I was laying it up on the ceiling and painting it white and having to come up with hanging systems and all. I said, oh, the hell with that. And I had a guy come in and just spray the ceiling. These come four by eight sheets. They're like 22 bucks a sheet. You can, I got these in two inches. You can get these in, I think, two and a half, three, up three inches, four inches. Commercially, this is what goes on top of a metal, sh uh, like, uh, shopping center and all. This is what goes on top of the decking, and this is what they put another film on top. All right, so. And then what you're seeing here is these are two and a half inches. These these are metal. These like car parts are built. This is how my shop is built. It's built a metal building, galvanized. All right, and the wood. The reason why you see me putting wood is because in case I want to hang something later on and, and what i plan on doing on here is doing that same board going across and then putting metal and metal but i want to hang something i want to hang uh basically kind of make a little bar right here for myself you know or a nice backdrop so when i talk on the videos i got something nice to talk about now up here you see all i use is some angles there and there and the reason why you see the half inch sheet of plywood or actually OSB board is because very easy and I put underneath that I use uh, oh, liquid gold you know panel adhesive construction adhesive and then put those angles on the side to hold it flat because I did that ahead of time that's what my light screw into that's what my alarm system screws in so you have something to screw into outside why the shop still warm is I had the shop two feet tall, brick, bricked up, and then I had it stucco. Underneath the stucco is a one inch layer of styrofoam. And I had it done the same color as my back of my home. My home. You only get to see the back of my home right now. Anyway, back in the shop. Now the wood, all right, all I do is every so many inches, or feet, excuse me, to attach this wood to this, this is what I use. I get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever. Self-drilling screws, right? Two and three quarter. There they are, all right? They have basically, they self-drill themselves. They go in very easy, they go right through the wood and right into here. And the wood I'm using, when I buy the metal panels, they come on like a cribbing, you know, to keep them so they can lift them and stuff like that. They're exactly the right width, all right? <laughs> so they're two and a half inches. So as you see, I space out my screws about every foot, every two feet, all right? And it holds them in there tight as a drum. You don't have to go crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else to tell you. Oh, another thing. When you do put, you cut these ISOs, put them in, I use a table saw or a cir circular saw. You could use a, a knife, uh, box blade, but it's just straight cuts are so much faster and easier to do it that way. And then I take a can of that spray foam. Uh, you got it laying around here somewhere, but anyway. See the gaps I left? I just take the spray foam, spray it all the way around here. It seals it. The spray foam is closed cell foam too. Now I want you to look at this too. I put a little spacer behind here. I buy like a half inch of uh, this stuff, but I buy it at Home Depot, Lowe's, the one that has a silver backing on it. I just buy one sheet, one sheet did this whole shop. And I cut it into like two inch little spacers, put it behind, I glue it to here, and then I put a little glue, and then it gives a space. And the reason why you want a space is, you want an air gap. This doesn't need to be flat against here. So I've got the styrofoam behind here, Stucco, styrofoam, metal, air gap, and then two, two inch ISO. All right, and uh, if you do want to paint the ISO, like on the ceiling, it accepts paint. This fiberglass accepts paint really well. 
All right? And there's a special paint you can buy for it. It's a fireproof paint that you can spray on. All right? And you can look that up. And, oh, same thing. My spray foam ceilings is a fireproof paint that I will spray on later on. Probably springtime, whatever. I'll actually probably hire that out. I don't want to be on a ladder. I'll just have a guy tape all this off, move the cars out, drape down plastic, and he'll come in and he'll be out of here real quick. Spray it. Probably spray it. I don't know. Spray it white or black. I don't know. Paint booth had to be all white for me. Anyway, you see, and I ran all my wiring behind, okay, all by code. Electrician came and did it. And then what I did, that was for the outside stuff, internal junctions. But on the rest of the shop, I'll show you paint booth shows it up a lot better, you know. I just wrote, run, you can run the Romex outside, or I like doing it this way, the metal tubing. It's really easy to do. It costs a teeny bit more because you got to buy all the, you know, the connections and all, but anybody can do it. You can rough it in and elect, talk to an electrician. Electricians don't like, you know, they like the easy stuff. I roughed it all in, electrician came, ran everything, bam, 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 everybody's happy. You know, they like to make easy hits. You know, they don't want to be on their hands and knees and time-consuming garbage stuff. They like to make money fast. Anyway, that's it. And like I say, I always cut it on a table saw. Tomorrow I will. This is right here. This wall, the entrance wall, and that little piece on the other side of the garage door and above, that's all I got left to go. So I should have enough left over here in this pile of scraps. The big pieces go there, and then the scraps get to go in there. That's another thing. Keep your scraps when you're cutting the big, because you never know. Look, got small little areas that you'll be able to cut them and put them above, above the garage. I'll be able to use the smaller scraps in there. Okay? Anyway, uh, I got one more thing to ask you, okay? This is the first week of January. I don't care if you're old, young, whatever. Have you started a Roth IRA? Just, you know, sometime in your lunch break or every sitting home, just go on it. And if you got even got a teenage son that's working, go on it. Go to fidelity.com and I think it's called a Go account, but it's a Roth IRA. And they'll make the, uh, you put the money in. It doesn't cost any money to open the account. No money can. I don't care if you put $5, $1, whatever. And I'm going to teach you next time in a video on um, how to take a buck and in 35 years turn it into uh, over a million dollars. And so if your grandfather, or your uncle, your dad, or if you're you, if you got 35 years before you get a croak, you can still be a Bill Collar millionaire. It's very easy without having a side hustle or anything, just with a regular job. Change your family tree. So first thing you do, doesn't cost any money, open up a Roth IRA. Go to Fidelity.com, open it, and then you can also, after you open it, or if you're not sure how to open it, there's a phone number you can call. I did it for my niece in like five minutes. And then you can have, there's an account called a Go account. They basically ask you questions of how many years do you need the money, how long many years do you retire. Uh, for my son, we did it while we're driving, doing a stump job, and said, he changed it from a regular IRA to the Go because... I said, listen, let somebody else handle the money, let somebody else invest it, and it's all invested aggressively because you don't need the money for 30 years, okay? Anyway, see you later, see you in the next one.